There's no more sellers, yeah. right? Sellers are gone. All the big leveraged bad guys are gone. I, I do think it's the calm before the storm. I, I don't think that then, then they fight you phase is over. I think it's, it's going to come back. With, but sometime between you know May 9th of this year and May 9th of next year, we will see a FOMO rally just like every other cycle. Um, I'm officially declaring uh, three weeks from Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, is the official start of crypto summer. Mm. That also happens to be my birthday, but that's that's going to be the official start of crypto summer. There's no more sellers, yeah. right? Sellers are gone. All the big leveraged bad guys are gone. And it turns out that uh, I just did a presentation on this yesterday. Um, hash rate, new all-time high. Number of wallets, new all-time high. Number of wallets with greater than 0.1 Bitcoin, new all-time high. Transaction size and volume, not all-time high, but but coming back to, to being close. Mm. And all of those fundamentals are, are and, and my point of my presentation yesterday was, you know, crypto summer, uh, you know, surfing on a wave of global liquidity. Turns out people buy things that, that they like. And there's a whole bunch of people that, that like crypto and, and, and Bitcoin and ETH are the, are the biggest beneficiaries, but it's, it's going down the ladder too. ETH, I think, and I, I think I have this right, over the past couple of weeks has, has even outperformed BTC. I mean, you know, it was up 5% yesterday. You know, it crashed through 2000 and hit 2100 very quickly. So I I kind of come down on, on the latter part of your analysis to, to say, mm -hmm. yes, there's a, a legitimate fear that, you know, people would would unlock or, or you know, de-risk some portion of, of, you know, what they've been staking. But I, I kind of come to it as there's no evidence of that. Right. There, there's just there's just no evidence in the markets of big liquidations of, of really anything. And, you know, there there's some, you know, lower level coins that that have just been going batshit crazy because the, the goal of the government actually is to have the lowest CPI number possible. Mm -hmm. Full stop. And so the fact that it went up and that they lost control is telling because and the reason they, they want it want it low is. All of the entitlement programs Entitlements, are linked yeah. to CPI. I think the economy is slow, slow-ish, slowish. Mm. Um, you know, I think I think first quarter number is going to disappoint. You know, fourth quarter number got revised down. Still not not horrible. And the last year, even though they're not going to call it, was a recession. It was a mm. mild recession. You know, one percent year over year, zero point nine year over year GDP. That that's recession. And look, I, I think the 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 biggest indicator is the ten year. The ten year yield has collapsed, right? It's down from four something to three point four something like that. Mm. And that's telling you that growth is decelerating, not accelerating. Yet, if you look at Chinese liquidity provision forwarded six months and PMIs, it would tell us that PMIs have troughed and that economic activity is going to rise, albeit slowly. But so I, I think we're going to avert the hard crash landing. A lot of people were waiting for kind of this big biblical, you know, sort of uh, comeuppance, right? Post, it was the largest withdrawal of liquidity, you know, in, you know, pick your time frame. Um, and we didn't really get that. You know, we got it in crypto for sure. Yeah, uh, definitely, definitely a rough 2022 for if you were operating in crypto. But, you know, if you look at a chart of the S&P, you know, it just wasn't, it just wasn't really that bad. Um, well, but remember the 60-40, Worst year ever. 140 years of data. Bonds got smoked. Your average got smoked too. 401k yeah. had its worst year ever. Now, it, it wasn't a, you know, 
401k turns into 201k, like the global financial <laughs> crisis or, or 2000. Yeah. But it was ugly. I mean, it was ugly. And, and if you owned tech stocks, ugly, ugly. Right? Ugly. I mean, yeah. we're talking down 35, 40%. And yeah, you've rallied back 15, but you're still down a lot. But he's on this toot about how he didn't understand why everybody thinks things are bad. Everything is awesome. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He says, oh, look, mm. stocks are back towards all time highs. I'm like, what? Only yeah. because we're denominating in a currency that's getting devalued. Mm. I said, if you denominate the S&P in gold, it's dead flat. And I, I showed this chart yesterday. If you look at the last 20 years, okay, all of the increase in equity is the Fed balance sheet. 100% of it. 100% of it. And so when equities rolled over last year because they tried the QT thing, what did they do globally? <laughs> Turned it back on. The QE is back on. And we are back to QE infinity. And because you have to, what the Federal Reserve is, right? It's not a bank, okay? It's not federal. It doesn't have any reserves. There are no deposits, right? It's not any of the things that, that people think. It's, it's not a bank. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is a private corporation that has a mission, essentially, to liquefy balance sheets of banks, right? That's its job. It's, it's Ponzi-nomics. At some point, we, we reach, and I think we have reached, in many cases, the tipping point where now we're generating debt and spending just because we have to. When, when you look at, at the actual data and you look at, you know, economic slowing and deglobalization and, you know, closing of, of trade routes and, and you look at what just happened with China and Saudi and, and Russia and, and what that means for the petrodollar system, it's really pretty easy to get kind of, I won't say bearish, but definitely concerned. Yes, it's, I, tough. it's tough to maintain optimism and energy in, in the face of constant beatings, right? You know, the mm. whole line, you know, the beatings will continue until morale improves. Well, yeah. morale ain't going to improve. <laughs> I mean, you know, you beat people down and, and they will, they will sink lower and lower. And, and it was just, it was a summer of beatings last yeah. summer or fall, yeah. the fall of beatings and, you know, bad people doing bad things and then government actors doing bad things. And, and suddenly there's this reprieve. Now, look, I, I do think it's the calm before the storm. I, I don't think that then, then they fight you phase is over. I think it's, it's going to come back with us. You know, Ms. Warren is assembling her crypto army. Could there be a dumber, a, literally a dumber campaign slogan than that? The 60-40, worst year ever. 140 years of data. Bonds got smoked. Your average got smoked too. 401k yeah. had its worst year ever. Now, it, it wasn't... A, you know, 401k turns into 201k, like the global financial crisis or, or 2000, <laughs> yeah. but it was ugly. I mean, it was ugly. And, and if you owned tech stocks, ugly, ugly, right? ugly. I mean, yeah. we're talking down 35, 40%. And that's why I think, look, crypto is where it is. Look, crypto is up a hundred percent. Bitcoin up a hundred percent. I know. Who is buying? Michael Saylor. Michael Saylor just know. bought another thousand BTC. He now owns one out of every 150 Bitcoin that will ever exist mm. in history. He's basically created, I love this, he's actually created the Bitcoin ETF mm. that the SEC won't approve. He has. And it's levered, which is yeah. even better because there's no way they would approve that. So, yeah. so you know, his stock's up 150%. Off the bottom, not 100, because he's got the leverage. And so so he's buying. Well, who else is buying? Well, CZ had to buy a bunch to, you know, 
give people the money that they they withdrew because he had a big run on the bank when he got sued by the U.S. government. But sometime between you know May 9th of this year and May 9th of next year, we will see a FOMO rally just like every other cycle. And I don't know what the number is going to be. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm very solidly in the camp that every halving we get a zero, you know, 10, 100,000, 10,000, this one's 100,000. And so that becomes the, the anchor of value. You know, the, the, the network increases by tenfold over a four year cycle. Um, but you can go way above that. I mean, way, like way, way. So mm. who knows, you know, at 10, we got all the way to 70. So that was way, way too high. And then, you know, we never, but we never got back to 10. That's interesting. Uh, over the last 14 years, Bitcoin has increased 68,192,810%. In the last 10 years, uh, eight of those 10 years, including this year, Bitcoin is the best performing asset of all assets. Over the whole 10 year period, it is the best performing asset. And, and that's why I just, I, I, I'm befuddled when people still have zero exposure. I'm not saying you should have 100%. I mean, that, that's not logical. But, but zero is the wrong number. Plan B actually tweet about this. He said, 4533, illegal to own gold. He said, 2023, illegal to own money. And I don't, I actually think it's 2024, but doesn't matter. But it ain't, it ain't 2050. Within the next 24 months, it will be illegal. Just let that word hang in the air. It will be illegal to have a $20 bill. That's a crazy thought. Yeah. And, and, and the reason it's crazy is when I have that $20 bill, and I don't use $20 bills very often, but I have privacy. I can do with that $20 bill whatever I want with no surveillance and no censorship. I don't, I don't have secrecy, right? I, I'm not doing anything illicit with it per se, but I have privacy. <laughs> this is a personal affront to the Bill of Rights. Yeah, I know. I, Bill of actually, Rights says we have rights. This says, no, we can restrict your rights. If you have an app that we don't approve of, you go to jail. No due process. What? Yeah. My ownership I, of, of, an, of an asset can put me in jail with no due process? Really? I know. Now, I don't believe it's going to pass, but the fact that someone actually wrote that, Michael, is fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs>